Now the last two objectives we're going to cover real quickly some kind of unique situations. We're not going to get into a lot of detail, but what about when we have a liability that we know we're going to have, so we know there's been a past event, we know we're going to have a future obligation, we know that it's unavoidable, but we don't know the exact amount. We're going to have to estimate that liability. So There's a lot of situations where we know we have a debt, but we don't know exactly how much it is. We need to go ahead and record that in our books. That conservatism principle says that we never want to understate liability. So I need to go ahead and record it, even if it's not exactly correct. I need to go ahead and record the estimate. So some common examples of these, we've already looked at some of them when we did in Chapter 5, refunds payable. That was a liability that we estimated we would have to pay. Another one would be warranties. If we offer warranties on our products, it's reasonable to expect that we're going to have to pay on those. We just don't know exactly how much. Um, if we offer our employees a bonus or a vacation or pension benefits, we know we're going to have to pay those. We're just not exactly sure how much. So we'll have to go in and estimate those. Now, there's a special category of assets that are called contingent liabilities excuse me, a category of liabilities. A contingent liability is a liability that might exist. It doesn't exist yet, but there's a good possibility that it will exist. If some event happens that is somewhat likely, then we would have a liability. So how we deal with that liability depends on the likelihood of it happening. The best example of a contingent liability is we've been sued. So we've been sued. We know that there's a possibility that we may lose. We don't know how much we're going to lose. We hope we don't lose, but there's that possibility. So we'll have to go in and decide what we need to do based on the likelihood that our lawyers and the experts think that we'll lose. So this chart kind of helps us out. If the likelihood that we're going to lose is what is deemed as remote, like there's no possible way, then we don't have to do anything. We can just ignore it. Now, in real life, I would caution you against just ignoring it because there's always a likelihood we're going to lose. How many of us like to read those articles that show up about stupid lawsuits that people have won? I like to read those and it always baffles me sometimes that the lawsuits that people win. So if it were my company, I would be hesitant to just say, oh, there's no way I'm going to lose. If it's reasonably possible that we could lose, then we at the minimum need to describe the situation in the notes to the financial statements. Just disclose it. This way we can say, hey, look, we're not trying to hide anything. We've told you about it, especially in this day of age with information. There's no point in not disclosing it. This is, again, my personal opinion, because those open records, anybody can find out that you've been sued. If it's probable that we're going to lose and we for some reason cannot estimate the amount, then you could in theory just describe it. I think it's always possible that you could estimate the amount. So if it's probable that you're going to lose and you can somehow estimate the amount, we need to go ahead and record that expense and that liability. Now, if it comes back that, hey, we won, we can back those off of our books and take them off. But it's so much better to go in and say, hey, we've already recorded this liability. We, it, you know, we're hoping we win. But just to be extra cautious, we're going to go ahead and record it now, let you know, and then if it turns out that we win, well, boohoo, we'll take it off our books.